Cecilia. Gonzalo. Um. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the press. I, I, I'll try very, much, very hard not to do, not to do it a recommendi, a recommendi style. Uh, fellow Kenyans, welcome to our daily briefing on the status of coronavirus in the country. Today. I want to acknowledge some of the gains we have made in a collaborative effort to combat the coronavirus pandemic. When we began this journey several weeks ago, we were fully cognizant of the fact that participation of our citizens in the fight against the disease would be our key success factor. We were not going to register any score against the pandemic without us all pulling together. Together with the interventions we have put in place and our constant plea to Kenyan people to take personal responsibility has been heard throughout this nation loudly and clearly. We are glad to note that people are incrementally coming to the realization that this disease is here with us and the scope of its, its devastation is real. This alone is a significant gain against a virus which has been thriving with no regard to class, color, race or religion. And I want to emphasize that this is not a government that is trying to make its citizens act. This is a government that wants to act together with its citizens. This is not a government that is trying to force people to do things. But this is a government that wants to work together with the communities and to do things together. Each of us taking responsibility for the other. So I want to thank Kenyans for embracing our messages and for becoming true allies against this virus. By and large, we are witnessing our people washing their hands more often, maintaining social distance requirements in public places, staying at home, observing hygiene measures, wearing masks, obeying the curfew regulations, as well as travel restrictions. So we must not lose sight, even as we begin this journey, even as we see the challenges ahead, we must not lose sight of how well our citizens are supporting this, these measures. That is not to say that, uh, they are, that everybody is doing what they are supposed to do. And the danger still remains because of those who are not adhering to these restrictions. So I encourage those that are lagging behind to step in and move with the rest of the country. Now that we are fighting on the same side, this thing does not have two sides. It's only got the same side, those who want to live. We expect to register more gains in the coming days. However, it is important to state that we cannot afford to drop the ball at any time soon. If anything, we are called to move more vigilantly and to sustain the measures until victory is obtained and our curve has been flattened, which it has not. We must jealously guard against any gains that we make and ensure that we do not take steps backwards. This is not a time to be complacent at all. However, we have also noted with serious concern 
that there are those who continue to challenge the law. Border border operators are not fully observing the directive not to carry more than one passenger. And we have made it clear, if you, if you disobey that law, your border border will be taken until further notice. So there is absolutely no reason why, do you, why, do you, why you would want this to happen. You are also supposed to be wearing masks, which are now quite available around the country and the ones we have distributed around the counties. We have also noted that they are the ones being used to flaunt movement restrictions into and out of designated counties of Nairobi, Kwale, Mombasa, and Kilifi. Let me remind you that we will not hesitate to introduce stiff measures in this regard. We therefore encourage all compliant operators to compel their colleagues to observe the already set measures in order to, to protect the businesses that will be messed up by those who do not obey the law. So border border operators, the chairman, you have been told again and again that, that these are the measures that are supposed to be observed. And unfortunately, when, when, you, when you close a sector, you don't close the sector and say only the bad people uh, are going to lose business. Everybody loses business. So in this regard, you are your brother's keeper. Ensure that, you have, yeah, that the next border border is obeying the law. Fellow Kenyans, I wish to state that we have noted the level of exposure of face masks being sold in the streets. We must ascertain and we continue to monitor the quality of the masks and we urge people to take the necessary precautions to maintain the levels of hygiene. There has also been questions asked about the best way and how to actually make use of the masks. And I'm going to ask my colleagues to, 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 to weigh in on that uh, when I'm done with my, with my statements. I was, today I also want to address a special case and a special sector of our economy. And that is the Juakari operators and others, our salonists, our saloonists, Mamamboga, our economy, our barbers in the barber shops, our economy to a large extent depends on you. But also, a lot of the abuse and non distancing is happening in your sector. We cannot allow Kenyans to die because of non-distancing in any sector. So I am appealing. Those of you who are carrying out the hair cutting business in barber shops, in saloons, I am appealing to you today that ensure that social distancing fumigation of your, of, your, of your working places. Masks are used at all times. The idea of people sitting, waiting, inside your premises, sitting together very closely, waiting for their service, that is just a problem. Because as they sit waiting, this is where the virus is working at its best. Na mimi natangetaka kuzi sana sana wale wako katika soko mama mboga kina mama wetu dada zetu wale wanafanya hii kazi katika masoko. Sisi hatutaki nyinyi muumie. Na kuna jia mbili ya kuumia. Ya kwanza 
utapata hii virusi usipofanya vile tunasema ukiendelea na kazi na mtu anakuja humjui na anashika mboga mnazungumza na yeye yeye hana mask mwingine atakuja na mwingine atakuja kijiji nzima inapitia hapo na wewe mwenyewe huvai mask na ukai kali, bali na mtu yule mnazungumza na yeye hiyo ni kumaanisha ya, ya, ya kwamba ikiendelea namna hiyo wewe utapata hii virusi na ukipata hii virusi hiyo biashara unafanya ya kusaidia watoto wako hutafanya hiyo biashara kwa sababu utakuwa mgonjwa na hao watoto unawashunga saa hii watoto wako na watoto wa jirani na watoto wa kina familia yako hutaweza kuwashunga kuwa kwa sababu kwanza utakuwa mgonjwa tutakuombea upone lakini vile tumeona nchi zingine yenda ikawa hatutapona basi tukifika hapo watoto wale ulikuwa unafikiria ndio unashunga saa hii au watoto ndio utawaasha peke yao hawatakuwa na mtu wa kuwashunga kwa hivyo jameni mkiona hii tukisema tukisema wewe ujitahadhari ujishunge ujikinge jameni sisi tunasema hivyo kwa sababu hatutaki dadako umuashie watoto wako hatutaki ndugu yako umuashie watoto wako na tukiendelea hivyo wewe ukishika hiyo virusi ni kusema ya kwamba pengine hata hata dugu yako ataendelea pia kupata virusi. Sasa mkipata nyote hata watoto wengine watapata. Wale wataishi wata, wataishi na njia na njia mbaya sana na maisha mambaya sana. Bila masomo, bila kulindwa. Kwa sababu kuna mtu fulani ambaye tulimwambia ajikinge na njia hii ambayo tunasema na yeye akakataa akaona kama ni maisha kawaida kwa hivyo mimi nataka kusihi watu wetu sana sana wale mnafanya kazi katika soko open markets soko hizi zingine watu wale wanaingia hiyo soko ingefaa ingefaa wewe useme ya kwamba ama ujue ya kwamba hao watu wanaingia wana virusi just assume that everybody is positive Assume if that everybody is positive and now deal with that situation. Deal with a situation where everybody is positive. The person next to you is positive, the person buying your vegetables is positive, yule ambayo mnamnyoa nyweri yeye ni positive, yule ambao ni una una here when you are making this here ladies. Yule ambao ndamtengeneza nywele yake akiwa amekaa hapo na wewe uko hapa anasoma gazeti wewe unaendelea na kazi yako asipokuwa na mask wewe uwezi kujua kama ni virusi sasa unachika dakika hiyo 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 kwa hivyo jameni mimi ningetaka tu kusema kila mtu ni lazima ajihathari kila mtu binafsi ajihathari na pila na pia kila mtu alinde yule mwingine Ukinilinda nitakulinda. Na hii virusi haitembei peke yake. Hii virusi inatembea na watu. Watu wasipotembea basi virusi haitatembea. Na ndio sababu tumesema wakati huu wa pasaka. Wakati wa pasaka kwa sababu hakuna kazi watu wanaenda ni lazima watu wakae nyumbani. Ukiwa kijiji yako ama estate yako wewe kaa hiyo estate yako. Kwa hivyo ukiwa hapa buruburu usiende umoja wewe kaa tu buruburu. Ukiwa unakaa Lavington wewe kaa Lavington hapana enda Gong. Kwa hivyo utasaidia serikali na ujisaidia wewe mwenyewe. Ukiwa kwa wakati huu wa Easter tuone ya kwamba watu wakae nyumbani. Stay at home. You have no reason to go anywhere. Hakuna mambo ya ya ya, ya party. Hakuna mambo ya mbuzi. Ati tunaenda kula mbuzi pale fulani. Hakuna hiyo. 
Kwa hivyo kama hakuna mbuzi na hakuna pati na hakuna baa na hakuna chochote unaenda kufanya nini? Weka nyumbani. As I finish, I want to say that we appreciate in a very special way our corporates, philanthropists, volunteers, researchers, health workers and medical staff for their support. From the young fashion designer distributing free face masks in Kibra slums to the corporate giants like Safaricom PLC who continue to make huge sacrifices in aid of this fight, the country is indebted to you. Our researchers who are not sleeping, developing local solutions to this menace, and my staff in the Ministry of Health, I thank you all and I want you to know that we do not take your work for granted. We know the sacrifices you are making. Let me also laud the effort being done by the county government of Kitui through the Kitui County Textile Center Kikotek and their governor, Governor Shari Tingilu. The facility is now producing an average of 30,000 face masks per day. And indeed those of you in social media will have, rear, will have seen that even the World Health Organization has appreciated and recognized, and recognized their efforts. I want to encourage institutions and businesses to place their orders through uh, Kikotek and for businesses to support communities. Those who are wondering how to support, call Kikotek. And their address, I've got their address here. I can uh, give it to the media as well. I've got even their, their telephone contacts, which I can also give you so that uh, you can purchase for communities, purchase for your organizations, purchase for your companies. These are KEBS approved face masks. I also take this opportunity to acknowledge the bold step taken by our newspapers and our media houses today for their united clarion to call the clarion call to fight the virus. This is unprecedented. It shows uh, the unity of a nation, it shows the unity of different segments of our economy, and the unity of our support. This father amplifies our call for unity against the pandemic. Fellow Kenyans, in the last 24 hours, we have witnessed, we have tested a total of 308 samples out of which five people have tested positive for the coronavirus disease. Three are Kenyans, while two are foreign nationals. And three of them had traveled, one each from Tanzania, and two from the, one from the UK, and one from the United Arab Emirates. Three of the cases are in Nairobi, while two are in Mombasa County. Only one of these cases came from mandatory quarantine facilities, quarantine facilities, while the rest four were picked by our surveillance teams from contact lists. This now brings the total number of those who have tested positive for the disease in the country to 184. The ages of the five new cases are between the ages of 39 and 77 years old. Three are male, while two are female. In terms of the age breakdown of the 184 cases, three are below 15 years of age, 49 are between 15 and 29 years of age. 119 are between the ages of 30 and 59, while those above 60 are 13. From the gender perspective, 107 are male, while 77 
half female. I could add that uh, the five people have already been moved to isolation facilities and uh, tracing, contact tracing has already begun. With regard to contact tracing, a total of 2,046 persons have been monitored. Out of those, 1,448 have been discharged and 598 are currently on follow-up. An additional four persons have been discharged in the last 24 hours, having moved from positive to negative status. This brings also a total of 12 persons who have been discharged and recovered so far. This is good news. But I'm also sorry to say that we also lost one person in Mombasa in the last 24 hours. The, sorry, the person had passed on before. They had not noticed that um, the person died too quickly after going to hospital had other cases as well, but uh, died and upon death during the postmortem is when they realized the person had also, was also positive. So that is, an, that is seven, it brings to seven the number of people who we consider having died from the COVID-19 disease. I'm also pleased to say that we have managed to close down a number of quarantine facilities which include the Trademark and Hill Park Hotels. In this regard, we are kindly appealing to fellow Kenyans to warmly receive those of us that are in those facilities and have since been released to go home. There should be no stigmatization of anybody. As I said, this being Christmas, I want to wish you all Oh, sorry, this being Easter weekend, is actually the Easter weekend, I would like to wish you all um, a good Easter, but keeping in mind that we have proposed that you stay with your families, you stay indoors, and you do not party as is our usual. Clearly, you will not be traveling uh, anywhere else, so why not just uh, uh, stay at home? So I want to finish there and take uh, one or two questions. are depending on uh, the ones who have already tested positive for so you are depending on them to give you the information and I assume that they give you the information concerning their close contacts what about those strangers perhaps they met and they do not know that they already met someone who is positive uh, Dr. Masi Kori, Standard Group, KT News. Uh, my question is on the restrictions, the curfews, and the lockdown of designated uh, zones. We know for every action there's a reaction. And we've seen from uh, the doctors on the ground and some of the patients that they are not able to access some health care services, be it emergency mental health care services, obstetric and gynae emergencies, even dental emergencies, because either they are not able to get into the uh, designated zones, especially for cancer patients, or the clinics where they're used to going are no longer uh, operational because the doctors have closed. What measures are there for these particular people, uh, knowing that our ambulance services is not the best in the country? Uh, what measures are there to cater for all these people? And finally, on the people on quarantine facilities, how do they get their results? Do they have to tune in? Uh, to the TVs and the radio stations to get their results, or is there a mechanism in which okay. they get their results? Okay. Next. Anybody else? Yes, Steve. 
Yeah, uh, my question is uh, the, the quarantine centers that have been closed, which one are they and which one continue to operate for the mandatory quarantine? And you've also spoken about uh, the government's frantic effort to flatten the COVID-19 infection curve. What is the projection in terms of the already uh, tested cases and the people in quarantine in terms of flattening that curve? How, what is your projections? When will things come to normal? And finally, about Mandela, 30 people are on quarantine. The governor says there are no test kits that they will use to send specimens to Nairobi. Is the ministry taking that up? Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, about uh, Aga Khan, we continue to cooperate with all uh, private sector hospitals. Um, at no time did uh, any hospital uh, refuse to cooperate with the ministry. What we have continued to tell them is to make the facilities available so that um, and to bring down the costs of uh, the testing, bring down the cost of the. Uh, um, I, we see even them uh, charging for things like gowns and stuff. So we have told them that this is not business as usual. So we are cooperating with um, our private sector hospitals and mission hospitals and also supporting them in ways that, that they can. But I would also like to tell you that they have also been extremely supportive you know, to the government. I remember when we were looking, there is a time we were running short of uh, testing kits. And I called the, the, Aga, Khan, the Aga Khan Hospital and they provided testing kits to us for that evening. Yeah, we have also had situations where we have gone to them and uh, asked them to give us um, um, even uh, PPEs in the, in, the, in, the, in the original days when the disease broke out and they assisted us. So I would like to say that uh, let's not just criticize, let's also give thanks and, and to acknowledge where support has been given and they have given support. Uh, on contact tracing, we have got very many methods, uh, Nancy, of contact tracing. Uh, first, the first, of course, is the people themselves and telling us where they have been. We have not had any case so far. In the last um, couple of weeks, we have never had a case of an individual refusing to tell us who they have been in touch with. Because obviously they appreciate that uh, if we talk to them and they come to us and we isolate them or whether it is in a facility or, or at home, it saves lives. So, and I think you will recall when uh, the first case uh, reported to us and the second and third cases that were positive came from the first case. So people have continued to be very cooperative. I would not say that they haven't uh, been. But as I said, Safaricom also assists us in, uh, in, in that regard because we are also able to, to, um, to engage them with who they have been talking to, uh, who they have been visiting, etc., etc. Uh, Mercy on the, the curfew and the restrictions. We, have, we, we are working very closely with the police and with the enforcement agencies that um, wherever there is a case like that, wherever there is a case where somebody needs um, uh, care, health care, we, we are in touch with police all the time. And also, don't forget that our people are also moving around. But now let me also tell you the kind of abuse of these systems we have seen. Two days ago, there were young people who wanted to beat the curfew to go to a party and guess what they got to go for the party with? An ambulance. That's how bad it gets. You take an ambulance under the guise of the sickness to go and hang out instead of leaving the ambulance for the kind of uh, purposes that you're asking. So again, we are, we are also using this opportunity, I'll write on your question, to ask Kenyans to be more responsible than uh, such individuals would be. And of course, we will get them and um, arrest them. Um, I would, uh, there are many questions that I'm going to leave on that side from the massive questions. I'm going to leave to, um, uh, to Daktari. We continue to close centers, even tonight. There are some uh, quarantine facilities that we are going to close. 
because we no longer need um, uh, to keep them open. Um, I can't give you a complete, a complete list of who, I have just mentioned two of the ones that I told you, but there are several hotels, for example, that were hosting people that uh, we have uh, virtually closed. Hotels even including hotels like Panari, I think we will close those ones tonight because we are letting the people there. Once the people have tested negative, and there's a second test by the way, once they have tested negative, we are not keeping anybody in quarantine anymore. So we are pushing it as fast as possible. I think the other thing to remember is that uh, even those who have been complaining about the 14 days, is to remember that a lot of that 14 days is also coming to an end now. And sometimes the doctors might decide that it doesn't have to be quite 14 days, even 10 days is enough, and, um, and let them go. So we are doing everything we can to see that um, we open. We are, we are assisting Mandela, and we will continue to assist Mandela as much as we can. Yes, we, know, we, de we do realize that they have got a number of challenges. First and foremost, they have a very open border. They have a very open border around there, so people keep on walking in and walking out, literally. So we are asking our enforcement agencies, you know, to step up and to make sure that they restrict movement across our borders in the Mandera area. And uh, I know that that is being done. We are also, as a Ministry of Health, going to empower the hospital, the, the, the hospitals in Mandela, so that they are able, we have got a list, in fact, as late as last night, I got a list from uh, Mandela of the kind of support that they are asking from us and we will give them that support we will support them completely so they are able to uh, to work on their own of course the testing facilities are a challenge because uh, of the distances but once we have got the the first testing kits then it will not be necessary for them to send samples here because you'll be able to handle it from there and send them testing kits from uh, from Nairobi so I would like to stop there and uh, give my colleague Dr. Amos, uh, a chance to also respond to some of the other more technical issues that were asked. Uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, regarding the issue of uh, continued services, indeed we have communicated to the counties to ensure that normal services continue uninterrupted. And also lessons learned from Ebola outbreak of 2014. We have directed the 47 counties to identify and designate a COVID-19 hospital so that other hospitals can be allowed to continue offering the normal services, immunization, reproductive, maternal child health, uh, TB services, HIV services. On top of that, of course, as Waziri has said, you are also in constant uh, dialogue with the security apparatus to ensure that even at the county level, there is unfettered movement of those who require to seek services at any given time. And we have even gone ahead, especially for people with chronic illnesses who require to come to, like Nairobi for chemotherapy or radiotherapy. My office has facilitated several letters to people who require and uh, my appeal to the media is that if there's anybody who requires support in terms of a letter to be able to access services like radiothera radiotherapy, chemotherapy, please pass that information. Our offices are open. We'll be able to facilitate them with the necessary uh, correspondence to allow them move and get services. I also wanted to discuss something about the issue of masks. One, it's important that before you don on your mask, you wash your hands properly and hold the mask like the one I'm having with the ears. Put it on, pinch the nose so that it fits well. It should cover your nose and your mouth. And of course, after use, which should not be more than 12 hours, you should dis discard it properly. Don't just throw it anywhere. Throw it into the trash can so that it can be properly be dis disposed by the municipal uh, uh, municipal uh, waste management services. I also wanted to bring the issue of the use of gloves. Very many facilities you find people wearing gloves and I can even see in this gathering people who are wearing disposable gloves. Uh, research has not shown any advantage of wearing gloves in terms of protection against COVID-19 infection unless you are using it in 
a healthcare facility. Remember, gloves are supposed to be used for a particular purpose and then be discarded. Uh, people are wearing gloves from morning to evening, they are sweating, the gloves have holes, and that breeds a lot of complacency, therefore they forget to wash their hands. Please avoid wearing gloves unless you are a healthcare worker, and if you are to use gloves, use them and immediately you finish using them, please dispose of them appropriately. Otherwise, the other danger that you are exposed to when you wear gloves for too long is that involuntarily you are, supposed, you are bound to touch your face. And because if you wear it for too long, then it could be contaminated. The moment you touch your face, that puts you at a risk of getting the COVID-19 disease. Um, How are people in isolation and quarantine getting their results? The results, isolation and quarantine facilities, of course, isolation facilities are manned by medical practitioners, their doctors, their clinical officers, their nurses, and once we collect and compile the results for the day, we transmit them to the facilities, either the isolation facilities and the quarantine facilities. We have designated senior officers, in fact, heads of directorates in the ministry are the ones who are responsible for the quarantine facilities and the people who are supposed to transmit the results, the people in quarantine. The people in isolation, of course, get their results from the clinicians who are taking care of them. Uh, there were problems before because sometimes of transmission. Remember the results are coded, and initially we were using a manual system, now we have gone digital. That could lead to a bit of delay, but from yesterday, things have really improved. And as Waziri has said, we are closing the quarantine facilities in fact, we are doing testings from day 8 to day 10, the second testing, and if you uh, turn negative, then we send you to continue self-quarantine at home, even at the county level in consultation with the county health management teams. So we are looking, uh, today the team is out to visit the remaining quarantine facilities like MTC, Nairobi, MTC, Karen, the Panaris, uh, Lantana in, in Westlands and we are comfortable that by the end of this week we shall have literally closed all the quarantine facilities. Those who test positive of course will have to go to the isolation centers for treatment and monitoring. We are also in discussion with the government of Japan who have uh, developed an antiviral Avigan which you guys might be aware of which has shown very good promises so that you can also be able to get some limited doses that our clinicians can also be able to try for COVID-19. And we are hopeful that we'll also get stellar results like what they got from, uh, from, from Japan and also China. Thank you. Thank you.